So thank you for joining us. So tell us why is Colt an early adopter of NFV and SDN? Um, yeah, we are a, a very early adopter. We actually started uh, three years ago with uh, virtualization, even before the terminology of NFV was uh, invented. Uh, virtualization exists in the telecom space since quite a while, so we try to exploit uh, the existing capabilities uh, and develop the virtual enterprise CP capability, moving away from the physical world uh, into the virtual world uh, at very, very early stage. So it's now two and a half years we are in production with this capability. We also uh, de developed uh, SDN uh, in data center to hook up our network with our IT uh, service offering. And uh, after that, we also started with SDN in the transport space. Right. So you are an early adopter. Was the main driver cost savings or agility? Uh, the first business case was actually based on cost savings. Huh? Uh, there is a significant cost uh, involved in the access space. So uh, virtual CPE is the, the most uh, compelling use case for, for service providers and it was also for us. At the time the cost of a, the average cost of a layer 3 device uh, was over a thousand euro and we deployed thousands of them. So removing that cost was a big driver. Uh, lately also became, uh, the service side became also a driver. Uh, once you start to, to remove uh, the physicality of the, the service then a number of scenarios materialize. You can uh, more easily uh, give the customer the opportunity to change uh, service parameters like the bandwidth. Uh, you have much less constraint. Uh, uh, there is also the aspect that uh, activation of the service is faster, so you bring in revenue much faster uh, without the, the need to deploy a physical device. Hence the agility aspect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you've got a lot of experience in this field compared to a lot of uh, CSPs. What's the most important thing you've learned about implementation? Yeah, I think the, the one thing I would mention is the fact that you need to treat uh, the, uh, the, the introduction of this capability as a business transformation. It's not a technology change. If you handle it as a technology change, uh, you will only get some benefits. The business aspect of it is very important. You're going to uh, change the way you operate the network. Uh, the telco people in operations are used to a certain type of uh, uh, capabilities and moving into the virtual world is a uh, is, uh, is a change, uh, significant change for them. Uh, even uh, on the product side, uh, the proposition is to be adapted. You, if you want to maintain exactly what you had uh, before uh, and uh, without touching the service proposition, uh, you're going to really make it very, very difficult. So you have to handle it as a business transformation and try to take the whole uh, company, especially operations, together with you. That's uh, the main uh, learning we have had. So the entire senior management team needs to be involved? Yeah, you have to have uh, uh, a transformation program in place, exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's just finally talk a little bit about open source. How important is that in this context? Um, yeah, good question. I think there is lots of uh, uh, evolution in the system space. Uh, open source is one of the options. Uh, it's uh, driving uh, a different approach in the way we handle OSS and IT systems in general has taken uh, IT services by a storm and I think we, we will see the similar, uh, a similar pattern in the network space. At the moment uh, you still have to mix up different ingredients in the recipe and open source is one of them. Right, okay, so it's early days for open source essentially. Uh, yeah, some of the uh, initiatives are very interesting but maybe still not fully mature. Uh, and I think it's up to us, for us also, to try to take them forward. But uh, definitely will we'll play a more significant part in the future. Okay. okay, thank you for those insights. You're welcome.